All right, everyone, welcome back to the land of chem. I am your host and the author. My name is Jeffrey Drum. Thank you all so much for joining me again. This is episode 11, the function of the red pyramid part two. So in today's video, I will be reviewing and explaining the animation that debuted in the previous episode that demonstrates the function of the red pyramid. So if you want to get fully brought up to speed regarding the operation of this structure, I highly recommend you check out episode four here on the Land of Chem YouTube channel, The Function of the Red Pyramid, and you can get a thorough introduction to all of the concepts that I will be discussing today. So I'm also going to be presenting some rare old photos from inside of the Red Pyramid that, in my opinion, are the smoking gun evidence that these structures were never originally intended or designed as burials. So the Red Pyramid of Dashur is by far my favorite structure in Egypt, and it is a direct result of my personal experience inside of this structure that I began to develop the theory contained within the narrative of the Land of Chem book, which is that the Egyptian pyramids were designed to produce chemicals on an industrial scale. So I always get really excited to dive into further detail regarding the operation of this structure. So without further ado, let's get right to it. And just a quick reminder that limited first edition print copies of the Land of Chem book are now available. And every time I pick up my copy of this book, I can't believe how beautiful it is. The orchid color body pages and the purple metallic foil stamping on the cover, it is absolutely gorgeous. And I'm really proud of how these books turned out. So if you wanna help support me, support the channel, the best way to do that is just go to www.thelandofchem.com. You can pick up your copy of the book today. It means the world to me. So thank you all so much in advance. All right, the function of the red pyramid. Before we get started, I just wanted to share this picture. This is one of my favorites from my 2020 research expedition to Egypt showing the red and bent pyramids of Dashur. And it had just rained that morning in Dashur, a very unusual experience in Egypt. And that entire day was incredibly serene and surreal to say the least. And you can kind of get a sense of that from this picture. But nonetheless, the red pyramid here in the foreground. So my theory is that the Red Pyramid of Dashur was designed to produce an ammonia solution. And the chemical engineers that designed these two facilities capitalized on the proximity of the two pyramids for the production of a more practical, solid compound inside of the Bent Pyramid. And if you'd like to learn exactly how the Bent Pyramid operated and which chemical that structure was producing, definitely check out Episode 6 here on the Land of Chem YouTube channel entitled The Function of the Bent Pyramid. And just a quick review of the components and configuration of the Red Pyramid. So starting here on the outside of the structure, you will see the external reservoir surrounding the pyramid, which would have been filled with water. Your reservoir intake valve is located here on the eastern side of the structure. On the northern face of the pyramid, you will find the northern pump shaft. And in the previous episode, episode 10, I provided a thorough explanation for exactly how these pump shafts operated and you can check out that episode if you want to dive into further detail but long story short these pump shafts descend into the three reaction chambers of the red pyramid which are your primary steam reformer your secondary air reformer and your final synthesis chamber and this is just a close-up of those three reaction chambers so that we can quickly review their configuration so we have here again the first chamber in the reaction sequence is your primary steam reformer second chamber in the sequence is your secondary air reformer and your third chamber is your final synthesis chamber where that ammonia solution was being produced so two things to take note of in this diagram first the configuration of the chambers so these chambers were meticulously engineered with progressively reduced volume toward the apex of the vault and you can consult the physics regarding the ideal gas laws for the mechanisms of operation that were involved in producing the chemical reactions inside of these structures. But long story short, we know that if you compress and reduce the volume of a gas, you are going to increase its temperature and pressure. And that is exactly what was happening here inside the reaction chambers of the Red Pyramid. So the second thing to take note of are the large holes in the floor of your secondary air reformer and your primary steam reformer. So you'll see a large hole indicated here on the southern wall of the secondary air reformer and two large holes indicated here in your primary steam reformer, one here directly below the connecting shaft and one here in the center of the chamber. And I believe that these are the drainage and fill shafts that were utilized to manipulate the water level inside of these chambers, but we will get to that here in just a moment. 
So now that we have a thorough understanding of the components and the configuration of the red pyramid, let's go ahead and proceed with an explanation of that animation. All right, as this animation gets rolling, a huge thank you to Alan from the Sacred Geometry Decoded YouTube channel for helping me bring my vision of the red pyramid to life. Dude, this animation came out better than I ever could have expected. Thank you so much for helping me with this. And here we go, zooming into the interior component of the red pyramid. So first you will see your external reservoir surrounding the structure filled with water and the water flows through your reservoir intake valve and will begin to fill the chambers. So the first step of the process is to fill these chambers until the connecting shaft between the first two chambers has been filled. Now what this does is it isolates the remaining interior space of your primary steam reformer and it sets the initial pressure conditions inside of that chamber. At this point, your initial reactant is then introduced into the chamber through this shaft here on the western wall of your primary steam reformer. And there are multiple reasons that I believe that this hole is a shaft termination, and I will get to that in great detail in a later video. Unfortunately, nowadays, the hole is completely filled with modern concrete, but long story short, I do believe that this was the shaft used to deliver methane into your primary steam reformer. So a couple of things to remember. Methane is a water insoluble gas. So as the methane fills the chamber and the water level begins to rise, the water is gonna act like a plunger compressing that methane into the upper portion of the vault. We already know that that upper vault was designed with progressively reduced volume. So the volume of the methane is gonna be significantly reduced, increasing its temperature and pressure to create a chemical reaction. And we will see that here in the animation in just a moment. So here in the animation, you can see that water level rising inside of the chambers, filling that connecting shaft. The methane is then introduced into your primer former indicated here in yellow. The water level will continue to rise inside of those chambers, compressing that methane gas into the upper portion of the vault, reducing its volume and increasing its temperature and pressure. So a couple of things to keep in mind. First, that what I put out here on the Land of Chem YouTube channel is just intended as an introduction to the operation of these structures. There is a lot of very important material that I'm reserving for anyone that wants to read the book. Second, this book is just the first book and that what will eventually be a series here at the Land of Chem. So I have a lot more information regarding the operation of these pyramids, but hopefully with this animation, you can start to visualize and understand how these structures really operated. So at this point, you have your methane being compressed into the upper portion of the vault. We know that its volume has been reduced, its temperature and pressure have increased. So that increase in temperature is gonna cause the meniscus layer of water here in the chamber to transform into steam. The steam is going to react with the methane under those high temperature, high pressure conditions to create hydrogen and carbon monoxide. So at this point, your hydrogen and carbon monoxide are trapped here in the upper portion of your primary steam reformer, and the water will then be drained from the chamber so that the gases can move from chamber one to chamber two, and we will see that here in the animation in just a moment. And here in the animation, you can see that water level rising in the chamber, compressing that methane into the upper vault, increasing temperature and pressure, the water transforming into steam. The steam reacts with the methane to create hydrogen and carbon monoxide. At this point, the water level is lowered in the chamber until an aperture has opened between the first and second chambers. So I believe that there are two mechanisms of operation involved in moving the gases from chamber one to chamber two. So the first will be a pressure differential. So your gases in your primary steam reformer are gonna be under a high pressure condition compared to the low pressure system here in the remaining chambers. So as soon as that aperture between the first two chambers has been opened, these high pressure gases will want to move through that connecting shaft into the lower pressure system here in your secondary air reformer. The second mechanism are the fluid dynamics involved in the draining of the chambers. So as the water level is lowered in your primary steam reformer, the water is gonna be flowing from your primary steam reformer through the connecting shaft into your secondary air reformer drained here out of your drainage shaft below the southern wall of the secondary air reformer. So again, those fluid dynamics moving from the first chamber into the second chamber will help to facilitate the movement of that hydrogen and carbon monoxide gases through that connecting shaft into the secondary air reformer. Once those gases have moved into the secondary air reformer, they are both lighter than air. 
So your hydrogen and carbon monoxide gases will rise into the upper portion of the vault along with the air in the chamber, which contains oxygen and nitrogen. And we will get to that here in just a moment. And here in the animation, you can see that water level rising in the chamber, compressing that methane gas into the upper vault. Water transforms into steam. Steam reacts with methane, and that creates hydrogen and carbon monoxide gases. Once the water level is lowered, that aperture is open between the first two chambers, and your high pressure gases move from chamber one into chamber two, facilitated by the movement of the water. At this point in the reaction sequence, your hydrogen and carbon monoxide have flowed through the connecting shaft into your secondary air reformer. Those gases are both lighter than air, and they will rise into the upper vault of the secondary air reformer along with the air inside of the chamber, which contains oxygen and nitrogen. So at this point, the water level is raised again, as in the first sequence, to compress these gases into the upper portion of the vault and increase their temperature and pressure. And we'll see that here in the animation in just a second. All right, here in the animation, you can see that water level being lowered in the chambers. The aperture opens first and second chambers. Your hydrogen and carbon monoxide gases flow through that connecting shaft facilitated by the movement of the water. Those gases then rise into the upper portion of your secondary air reformer, along with the oxygen and nitrogen in the air. And you will see here in the animation that that water level is increased again to compress those gases into the upper vault of the secondary air reformer. So at this point, we have hydrogen, carbon monoxide, oxygen, and nitrogen confined into the upper vault of your secondary air reformer. There is a temperature and pressure increase in this portion of the vault, which creates a chemical reaction between those four gases, which is going to create hydrogen, nitrogen, carbon dioxide, and water. So your carbon dioxide and water byproducts are both soluble in water, and they will dissolve into the water inside of this chamber, leaving your water insoluble hydrogen and nitrogen confined here in the upper portion of the vault. So one thing to remember that was excluded from this animation, so that solution containing your dissolved carbon dioxide is then removed from the system and utilized for later purposes, and the chambers are then refilled with fresh water. So you have here, again, your hydrogen and nitrogen gases and a new fresh water system in here. Again, that carbon dioxide is removed and utilized later. At this point in the reaction sequence, your hydrogen and nitrogen are confined here in the upper vault of the secondary air reformer, and the water level inside of these chambers has reached the height of the water level in the exterior reservoir, and it cannot be increased any further unless it is somehow manually manipulated. So at this point, your stone block is inserted into your northern pump shaft and driven down the pump shaft, which is going to compress the water inside of the system and force the hydrogen and nitrogen that are confined here in the upper vault through the connecting shaft into your final synthesis chamber. And you can see here in the animation that hydrogen and carbon monoxide rising into the upper secondary air reformer. The water level is then increased, pressing those gases along with oxygen and nitrogen and air into the upper vault of the secondary air reformer, creating that chemical reaction which leaves us with hydrogen and nitrogen. The stone block is then inserted into the northern pump shaft, compressing those gases through the connecting shaft into the final synthesis chamber. Now, as that stone block reaches the bottom of the pump shaft, the water level will be compressed in your final synthesis chamber, pushing those hydrogen and nitrogen gases into the upper vault of your final synthesis chamber. Again, reducing their volume, increasing their temperature and pressure, which is going to create a chemical reaction that produces ammonia gas. So a couple of things happen at this point. The ammonia gas is highly soluble in water and will immediately dissolve into the water inside that chamber, creating an ammonia solution. And this does two things. First of all, it prevents the reverse reaction of the ammonia breaking back into hydrogen and nitrogen by immediately collecting the gaseous product being produced. Second, this encourages the forward momentum of the reaction by removing that ammonia gas from the system, leaving your constituent reactant gases of hydrogen and nitrogen to continue the reaction cycle. So we will see here in the animation, your hydrogen and nitrogen gases indicated here in red, and the color change inside of this chamber indicates the production of that ammonia solution.
All right, I'm going to run this back one more time from the very beginning with no interruptions so that you can see the structure in full operation. So again, we see the reservoir surrounding the pyramid filled with water. The water flows through the reservoir intake valve on the eastern side to begin filling the chambers. Water level rises in the chambers. The methane is then introduced into your primary steam reformer through the shaft here on the western wall. The water level continues to rise, compressing the methane, increasing temperature and pressure. Water transforms into steam. Water reacts with the methane to produce hydrogen and carbon monoxide. The water level is lowered, aperture between the first move through the connecting shaft into the second chamber, facilitated by the movement of the water. Those hydrogen and carbon monoxide gases rise into the upper portion of the vault along with oxygen and nitrogen in the air. The water level is raised again, as in the first sequence, to compress those reactant gases into the upper vault of the secondary air reformer. This creates carbon dioxide, water, hydrogen, nitrogen, powder dissolve into solution, leaving your hydrogen just through the connecting shaft using your pump shaft, and the pump shaft compresses the water into the final synthesis chamber, creating that reaction that produces the ammonia gas that dissolves into water, creating the ammonia solution. The ammonia solution is then drained from the final synthesis chamber, and the remaining chamber drained in preparation for the subsequent production cycle. So that, ladies and gentlemen, is the function of the Red Pyramid. All right, this is the first of two rare old photos from inside of the Red Pyramid that show what these chambers look like prior to the restoration and cleaning and before the installation of the wooden plank flooring and the construction of the large wooden staircase in the second chamber. So a few things to note in these pictures. The chemical staining in the upper portion of the vault is incredibly dark and nebulous. And I do believe that this is an indication of the high temperature, high pressure chemical reactions that were occurring in that section of the vault. You can also very clearly see in this picture that the chemical staining pattern moves from the upper vault down the southern wall of the chamber through the connecting shaft into your secondary air reformer. So the next thing to note in these pictures are the large holes that I mentioned previously. You'll see that large hole here directly below the connecting shaft and this large hole here in the center of the chamber. And again, I believe, according to my theory, that these were the fill shafts utilized to raise the water level inside of these chambers. And this is my favorite old photo from inside of the secondary air reformer, again, taken before the restoration and cleaning. And nowadays there is a giant wooden staircase that completely covers this section of the chamber. So unfortunately, we'll never get to see this wall again in its original condition. But nonetheless, we have these old photos. So you'll see here down at the bottom of the picture, the large hole in the bottom of this chamber. Again, I believe that is the drainage shaft that we utilize to remove water from the system. You can see the intense chemical staining pattern that completely covers this section of the chamber. Here at the top of the chamber in the upper vault, you can see how dark and dense the chemical staining becomes. And this is your connecting shaft that leads from your secondary air reformer into the final synthesis chamber. And I will, in a future video, do a thorough in-depth review explaining these pictures. And I will also include a review of that shaft termination in the primary steam reformer that I believe was used to introduce methane into that chamber. Because again, that's a video in and of itself why I do believe that that's actually a shaft termination. But again, I really, really like these old pictures because I think these are as close as we are ever going to get to the quote unquote smoking gun evidence that the Egyptian pyramids were originally designed to produce chemical reactions. And just a quick reminder that limited first edition print copies of the Land of Chem book are now available at thelandofchem.com. So if you want to help support me, support the channel, just go to the website, pick up a copy of the book today. It really means a lot to me. So thank you all so much in advance. All right, everyone, I really hope you enjoyed today's video. Again, episode 11, The Function of the Red Pyramid, part two. Just a quick recap and explanation of that animation demonstrating the function of the Red Pyramid. If you only knew what meant into making this video, you would understand my elation at this point. Super excited to finally get this out there to you guys. Um, so if you haven't already, please subscribe to the Land of Chem YouTube channel. It helps me get into the algorithm. If you like this material, if you find it interesting, share it with everybody you know and help me get this material out there. Definitely like the video if you like it. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, feedback, suggestions for future videos, topics that you want me to talk about, whatever it is, definitely drop a comment below. Again, those comments help get these videos into the algorithm, help get this out there. And again, I really enjoy interacting with everybody and I'm genuinely interested in hearing what you think. So please leave a comment below. We'll get a conversation going. Again, the website, thelandofchem.com. If you want to pick up a copy of the book and help support the channel, you can also follow me on Instagram at thelandofchem. I think that's it for today's video. So until the next episode, we will see you 
next time.